Peter, welcome to Australia. Thank you. Uh, I see you brought a little friend uh, with you today. Can you tell us a bit about who your travelling <laughs> companion is? I have with me today, Doug. Doug the caveman. Uh, he is the uh, star of Early Man. He's the, he's the death of the lead. Um, the hero yep. is the, uh, uh, the guy that's going to change the world. You know, and uh, played by Eddie Redmayne. Right, okay. Yeah. Alright, so is, is Doug pretty cheap as a leading man? Obviously, we have to pay him sort of an exorbitant salary. No, you're right, speaking. Actually, not cheap, I tell you, because, because the funny thing is, when you see this, you think, oh, that's cute. That's not, oh, a cute play puppet with, with fun fur on them. Yep. Um, but actually, the, the, the ones in the movie are super high tech, but, but the funny thing is that the, 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 the tech is completely disguised, you can't see it, so they've got really elaborate. Skeletons inside them. Right. Uh, so actually, they're really expensive to make. Actually, right. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. yeah. So not not the cheapest, but 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 very um, you know easy going. You know, no, definitely not a diva. Yes, not a diva. No. That's good. Good to know. <laughs> no, no tantrums. No. 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 no, no, no. Go back to his cave. None of that. Yeah. <laughs> very good. And now, look, tell me a bit about Early Man in terms of like where the concept came from and how it started getting developed developed by Hardman Studios. Yeah. So, this is Nick Park's idea. So Nick Park, who created Wallace and Gromit, uh, he had this idea, the first idea, a long time ago. I remember seeing a picture of some cavemen running around, cracking each other on the head with clubs, a long time ago. Uh, and, but then he started seriously to develop it five years ago. We, we all agreed this would be the next movie. Uh, and that's the easy part. And then he spent a long time on script uh, on story first and then script yeah. uh, you know like it's really challenging to get a good story really really challenging Doug goes up uh, against a villain voiced by none other than Tom Hilston he does he does evil very well he does it's, it's very yeah no, Tom is yeah, just marvelous larger than life what, what, what do you want from a villain you absolutely know, big extravagant sneering yep. contemptuous cowardly everything you want Oh, it, it sounds like Loki in claymation form. I like, like that. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. With a with a extremely long nose, yeah, <laughs> and and rather overweight. Right, right. right. Yeah. He was shooting Thor at the time up in Queensland, so we right. were actually recording him down down the line from from Queensland back to Bristol. Right. Uh, so you can, you can normally you can normally find them, but I feel sorry for them. Like you got an actor that's working full time on one film, and then they get they get an afternoon off and you, you get them in to do a voiceover. Mm. So he was moonlighting on Thor yeah. with uh, the yeah. early man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, I wonder if he was wearing his, his, his Loki helmet in the recording. I would like to think so. Right? I'd like to think so yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 I was imagining that like after a, a film production, maybe, you know, all the sets and all the characters just get smooshed into like a giant ball yes. and then get recycled for like the next film. Yes. Not a very romantic way to think about it, but <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just wondering if perhaps that's, you know, how, how it rolls. No, that's not at all. That, no, no. You, no, that doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, for several reasons. One is if you squish it together, you get the most ungodly mess of materials, you know, of, yes. of, because you've got fur, plasticine, silicon, steel, resin, all kinds of stuff. That would be quite scary. And mm. also, um, which, it's quite interesting. We, we want to keep them because we love them so much. Yeah. And then what do you do with them? Like, I've, I mean, I've got a couple of pirates on my shelf at home from the previous movie um not many chickens they were tend to they were all lost in a fire oh. um but then are they going to end up in i hope they'll end up in exhibitions that's a nice place to go yep lastly now that Ardman is celebrating its 40th year yeah how do you feel looking back at you know the achievements and the work that you guys have done yeah i feel very very proud yeah 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 I'm proud and amazed mostly mm. yeah in equal measure mm. um you know, because when we started, uh, we had no such ambitions, you know, we just, our ambitions were just to, you know, keep working till the end of the month, have a paycheck come in, that was it, you know, find another job, you know, scrabbling around, it's all like that. No, we had no notion of building any voices of empire. Yeah. Uh, and now there's, there's an exhibition at Acme, which is just, you know, pretty glorious, and, and where, you, where, you see, where you see 40 years you know, all, all bits of 40 years, 40 years represented. And I think, wow, that, that's pretty substantial. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Well, thank you for chatting today, Pete, and uh, congratulations on Armin's 40th. Thank and you. Looking forward to seeing early, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, thank you very much. Thank, and fun. thanks to Doug. He's been politely quiet. Yeah, he's no trouble, did he? No trouble. Good, good dog. Yeah, good. Good guest. Yeah.